watch these women who tell their stories take it at face value, like I said, because it's true. These women hustle. They get that money. I know for a fact just was getting that money out there. I was getting that money out there. I got my case. I got my paper. I have all my paper. Yeah, I try to be like that in the street. I try to help people look out for them and stuff. If I'm doing good, you're doing good. If I, you know, so much so that your motion of discovery was like, like, like a lot of people <clears throat> folded on him. And conspiracy to deliver meth means they just said a bunch of people just said that you were the dude. Methamphetamine and firearm. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Ugh, I hate conspiracy yes. laws. Anybody can go for that. All I have to do is say you were selling drugs and agree to testify in open court and you will be gone. Well, like 20 people said you were. Are you lost? Everyone tells. That's just the nature of the business. And I'm like, I see that because I'm looking at this shit and I got 20 people I've never met before that told on me. So cool. Um, so that's just what they did. Today we are going to be talking about Jessica Kent. A channel that has kind of become like a drama channel in sorts and maybe she could even be placed in like the dirty laundry sector of YouTube. She speaks about everybody being a drama channel and she hurls that around like it is an insult. Maybe truly it is just her projecting what she has become. Because her channel features all the drama surrounding people that she personally knows. There is literally nobody's tea around her that she's not going to share on her channel. She uses the people around her's vulnerable moments and just their moments in general for content on her channel. And that is very similar to what she is going after others for doing. The only difference is the people on YouTube who are doing commentary do not know a lot of these people personally and they are not exposing information that is not known to the public. I guess I could also say she is a questionable prison and recovery channel and unfortunately you have to put the word questionable in front of it even though she did serve prison time and she is part of the recovery community because there are a lot of questions surrounding her story time. Stand. I really didn't until I did. Until my motion of discovery came back and there were strangers in it. People snitched on me that I had never met before. I still haven't even read my police report actually because Arkansas only gave me my book and sheet and I never asked for the motion of discovery because the old me got the motion of discovery to see who snitched on me and that I would handle that after I got out. The new me wanted to be fucking different, to not think about that shit and to move on, to retire from that life. So I haven't even seen my own motion of discovery. Routine traffic stop. Mm -hmm. This is very different. And within five minutes, DTF was on scene, the drug task force. And that looks like un unmarked cars and cops in regular street clothes and like a badge with like around their neck or whatever. And I'm looking around and I'm like, oh fuck. Usually when I go to jail, it's just a second cop car pulls up and maybe a drug dog. Yeah. Right. This looks dramatic, you know? So I immediately was like running through my mind of this has been an investigation and they know who the fuck we are. We shit. You've been following me for weeks and my heart sinks. And I didn't say that. The only thing I said to him at this point was take me back to my cell, but it's coming back. Like you didn't think I was stealing in Walmart. You were following me in Walmart. Like I saw him in a car at a hotel. I saw him at a restaurant and now it's like all hitting me at once and I feel sick to my stomach. And they're, they continue to yell at me. I don't feel good. It's very obvious that I'm like coming down and I just, I feel like shit. So finally I'm just like, I want a lawyer. I just want a lawyer. And the agent says, damn right you want a lawyer. You want to see the pictures we have of you? Now keep in mind, right? So I got arrested um, at like 4.30 in the morning because I was a complete tweaker at the gas station trying to buy snacks. <laughs> so I got arrested for uh, possession with intent, delivery of meth, and simultaneous possession of drugs and a firearm. Someone just called or? There was an investigation, an open investigation on, not me, everyone else that I had met along the way. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, don't tell me you the badass. <laughs> I'm not though. In the second spot, we have Jessica at five years. Five years, wow. Really, huh? Let me know. Let me find out was a nail salon. You were messing scheme. with us the whole nail time. Nail <laughs> In the first spot.
key. And I know that you asked Jessica this, but I'm going to go ahead and answer because I kind of have a clue of what's going on. See, I did my time in the state of Oregon where you do 85% of your time. It's the same in the state of Florida. I did some county time out there, but I just got back from the state of Arkansas where Jessica did her time. And while I was out in Arkansas, I got to go into a jail, spend some time with inmates that are going through a treatment program. I spent an hour interviewing the sheriff of that county jail, and I got to talk to a lot of people. And what I found out about Arkansas is that you only do two and a half months out of every year that you get sentenced to. So I got a five-year sentence, and um, it's very confusing how they do it in Arkansas, but I got five years. Um, I had to serve a minimum of 50% of my time because of the gun. So they do that on all gun charges. You have to serve a minimum of 50% of your sentence, even though the gun was null processed, which means they didn't formally, like they reduced it. Which is absolutely wild and confusing, and I'm not sure why they ever started doing it that way. But you can get extra time taken away from you if you get write-ups or something like that. Two days on top of the 20 days that it took to transfer me from a medium security prison back to a maximum security prison. I got kicked out of that prison basically for fighting, and I, I had a really hard go of it. So. I was locked up and there was probably 60 cells in this unit and they were full. <laughs> they had like one or two cells to spare. They always kept those cells full. Some people were ad seg, which means the prison decides you can't come out indefinitely. And there's reasons behind that. I was punitive segregation, which means I got in trouble and I'm locked up. Instinct, I went bam and I hit the cop kind of in like the chest area or stomach. And you know, I kind of like did that and went, like I realized like, you, you just hit the cop. So she backed up and two other guards backed up and they sprayed me like in the face almost. Like they kind of reached their little spray cannon around and sprayed me and I immediately stopped what I was doing. I got like a direct hit of pepper spray and the chick I was fighting got it and we're coughing and my eyes are running and it just burns. And they kind of got on top of me, put me in handcuffs and dragged me to SAG. So nobody's sentencing is going to end up anywhere near what they were actually sentenced to when they go to do that time. And everything can depend on your behavior while you're locked up. And some things just don't add up because she has embellished a lot of her stories, which is really sad because she has caused this herself. She has caused the internet to question her and she has taken away from her own story. And she did have an interesting story to begin with, but she just got carried away with her embellishments. And I do want to say I won't say she lied about everything because that is where things have gotten really sticky lately. I think the assumption for everyone is she has lied about everything. And that is what happens when you lose the trust of people. People are not going to believe anything you say. But me, on the outside looking in, it really seems like she has mixed a lot of her truths with lies. And she has embellished her story times as a way to generate what she thinks fast success on YouTube. Before I start my commentary, it is very clear that I have struggled to post content about her and it's because I've taken a step back and realized that this is not about ac accountability because it seems that she is never going to take accountability. And sometimes you have to question how much of the beast you are feeding yourself because Jessica Kent, in my opinion, likes people talking about her. It gives her views, it gives her something to speak about, it drives attention to her channel and if you look at her channel, despite her being a channel that reached 1 million subscribers, her channel is suffering. She's barely getting views and the views that she is able to get are views off of drama and it seems that drama is fueling her channel at this point and I know that it's been over a month since I have covered her but I'm gonna pop in and give some updates and I do want to add even though I have struggled with making content about her I do feel that there is more that can be covered about her and things that could be said it's just I don't know if I really want to continue to make content on her just because of the way this thing is going but as I said, I feel like there is things that can be spoken about, especially with the situation with the creator, Nicole, which in my opinion, she has done very shitty and it deserves more exposure. So let's get to the topic of this video. So Jessica Kent recently posted a video where she speaks about Jason Forrester, which he is her alleged boyfriend, her friend, her bodyguard, whatever he is to her, he got arrested by the feds at her house. And I think a lot of us could see this coming because there was a lot of rumors circulating that Jason was wanted by the feds and that he had violated his parole and he was on the run. It's just that there wasn't any really proof to know if it was true, which 
There was an anonymous source on Reddit that came in and said that Jason had his doors busted in by the feds and it was very weird because Jessica Kent was at the height of her exposure at that time and is very interesting because that actually was the case and it was kind of like they were trying to take the attention off of Jessica Kent and put it on Jason Forrester. So anyways, a lot of people saw it coming. And I think for me, I really started to realize that it probably was true when Jason Forrester had posted on Facebook that he was dating Jessica Kent and then shortly after he had pulled it off. I thought to myself when I saw that, he is taking that off because he knew he was being watched. And when you're being watched by the feds, you know that they are going to do their research and they're going to find out who you're tied to and where they could possibly find you. So when he posted that on Facebook, he was basically telling the feds, look, this is one of the places you can find me. So it's not alarming that he did get busted at Jessica Kent's house. I think a lot of us saw that coming. It was very clear that they were in a relationship and even though he was on the run, Jessica Kent had him around her children, which is not cool. But before we start on the commentary on the arrest, I really wanted to make this video and just add something a little bit different. I wanted to take it all the way back and explore Jessica and Jason's relationship. We will be using a lot of information that Jessica Kent has shared online. In fact, all of the information is stuff that they have shared online. Because as I said, Jessica Kent airs out her own dirty laundry and those around her as well. So, as we can see on YouTube, Jason's personality is someone who likes to run to the defense of others, and he is a very loyal person from the looks of it. That's just me on the outside looking in. I do not know these people personally, so, you know, it could not be an accurate description, but it seems to me that he is very loyal and he is always running to Jessica's defense. It's about 15 time you guys been here. It's for me, it's the first, and I apologize okay. for whatever we're here you know, before, but I'm looking to talk to Jessica. Okay, okay. about it's, what? It's in regards to her children. <laughs> so let me guess, Judd Klein called? Okay, exactly. So what's the problem now? The problem is we go with this every fucking day with this guy. Okay, well then... When are you guys going to realize it's a fucking bullshit thing, man? Jess is not lying because she didn't use our names. The police report wouldn't be out for two weeks, they said, or a week. She's not going to put our names out there. We were going to do our own thing. This has nothing to do with Nicole. Reese gave her the paperwork. Just to discredit... Jess. I don't have time right now for that because I'm kind of moving around okay you know Nicole you said you got the paperwork for her on the foyer side right these women hustle they get that money I know for a fact Jessica was getting that money out there and that is exactly how they met Jason was coming to her defense Jason speaks about a situation where he was on the boardwalk and he sees Jessica Kent getting into an altercation. He runs to her defense, and according to both of them, he did this without even a thank you. The boardwalk. Mm -hmm. So, I was at the boardwalk one day, and I was coming out the boardwalk, and I see Jess there with some guys harassing her a little bit, and she's over there mouthing off and, you know, doing her thing. And I'm like, what is she doing over here? Why is this girl over here in this this spot because it's a it's a messed up spot man it's a it's a high drug area so i'm just i'm like man this ain't gonna go good for her so i walked up on her and been like hey come on let's go let's get out of here she's like who the fuck are you motherfucker type shit and i'm like man let's just go so she, she ended up leaving with me jumping in the car i mean and things were going bad for her over there if i didn't show up but i was always like that with people yeah, I didn't, I never like told you thank you either. I, I'm mouthy. I don't need your help. I did <laughs> yeah. though. And it seems that that is something that Jason is doing currently. So to add, Jason is supposedly helping Jessica Kent while he is incarcerated. Jason Forrester is like a troubled, shining knight that is constantly running to Jessica Kent's defense. And he is not even 
helping himself when it comes to finding solutions to his own problems. So it's not a shocker that this man is freshly incarcerated and he is still worried about Jessica Kent and trying to help her with her current issues that are surrounding her. So Jason, as an attempt to try to help Jessica Kent with a solution with a lot of the things that she has going on, he decides to contact somebody on the outside to contact Mindy. If you don't know who Mindy is, quickly, she is one of Jessica Kent's ex-friends who is also a content creator. She once lived with Jessica Kent while she was escaping an abusive relationship. She has exposed a lot of the things happening in Jessica Kent's house because Jessica attempted to expose Mindy and they fell out because of it and it did not end well for Jessica. Well, Jason has this person on the outside calling Mindy with his old phone and this person is saying that Jason is willing to pay money if she gives information to Jessica's production company regarding Tracy Noel and information on discovering Nicole, another content creator in the recovery community. This is all supposed to be used in this documentary that Jessica Kent is making to try to save her reputation with a lot of the controversies that surround her. They, someone sends me a text message from this phone number that already had a text thread with it, you know, and I glanced at the message above it and noticed that it was Jason the last person that had texted me so I was like that's fucking weird you know because it was Jason's phone and the text message said uh, I wish I could read it to you guys but I I'm on the phone so I can't read it to you guys the text message said hey I work for Jason I work for Jessica I'm Robbie more like it I work for Jason and Jason has a deal for you. He wants you to call me. So, of course, I called because it's just my nature. I can't help it. I maybe shouldn't have, but of course, I'm going to call out of curiosity. And so I'm like, hello. And he's like, is this Mindy? I'm like, yeah, this is she. What's up? And he's like, so Jason has a deal for you. He, there's a production company. He was trying to make it sound like he is one of his little gang flunkies, you know, like, uh, like another gang member or something, you know, that's what it sounded like to me. And so he says, Jason has a deal for you. Some producers have picked up this, all this shit, like the Jessica story with all of us i guess and jason wants you to give up nicole and tracy and he will give you his check and i was like i don't move grimy like that i would never do something like that uh you would have called them too i mean yeah i was so curious i had to jk is the producer laugh out loud I don't know who the producer is and I don't know what's going on. And he was like, well, when you see the size of these checks, you'll probably change your mind because I'm getting paid just to do this. And I was like, "Mm, no, thank you. I don't get down like that. Those girls are my friends. And I have all the text messages. They texted her and they said, hey, uh, I work for Jason. Um, He has an opportunity or a deal for you. I'm going to call you or you need to call me. So they ended up on the phone together. And this person told her that they would literally cut her a check to tell this person all the things that they need to know about me and Tracy. Like our names, which y'all already know, my full name and address is already online. So, but Tracy's is not, you know what I mean? And so, that's where I I was like really upset because I was like, that's fucked up because she's not online. You know, her, her identity is not online. They, they said that they're doing a docu-series with a production company and they will pay Mindy to tell them all the information she has on Nicole and Tracy. So of course, Mindy called me right away and gave me the phone number to this person 
calling her and asking her for that information. So y'all know me. I don't mince fucking words. I fucking called the bitch ass motherfucker. And of course they didn't answer the phone. So I texted him and I said, Hey, I heard you want to know about me. How about getting it straight from the horse's mouth? Me. And of course they didn't respond. They didn't respond. They messaged Mindy back and said, Jason already doesn't trust you and you're going to go and tell them, uh, yeah, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> like, honestly, so, so I'm sitting there thinking docuseries production, who's making a docuseries right now? Is Jason and Jessica literally sitting on the jailhouse phone? plotting out ways to get information on Tracy and I. Now, Tracy Noel is one of the creators that has really done the research and has been leading the way exposing many of Jessica Kent's lies. She is an anonymous YouTuber and she goes by a fake name. A fake name. Sometimes a content creator is anonymous on YouTube due to safety issues and concerns for the creator. Tracy Noel has shared parts of her story online and honestly, her story is pretty heartbreaking. She is a survivor of DV and her identity is private for safety reasons due to that issue. I don't know if Jessica Kent doesn't realize, but not all women get to leave their abuser and go and buy a house. Some women have to go into hiding, and this comes with things like name changes, address changes. There are women who really have to flee their old life behind in order to create a new life because they are hiding from their abuser because their lives are truly at risk. There are women who go to domestic violence shelters many, many states away from where they had lived previously with their abuser. So, a life can be put at risk trying to unmask and expose information on someone, especially if they went through things like a name change or even an address change. It's disgusting that Jason is working with Jessica Kent trying to find Tracy's identity because let's not forget to mention that Jessica Kent is the one that has access to Jason's phone. So if someone is calling with that phone, she has given them that phone. But at the end of the day, you really have to think to yourself, what less can you expect from Jessica Kent when she allegedly tried to be in communication with Mindy's abuser as well to dangerously claim that she was with her ex Reese because she knew that Mindy's ex would not be too happy and that is dangerous. It is sad and tragic that she is plotting with Jason to take down women who are DV survivors and at the same time she is on the internet stating that people are hurting her because she is a DV victim but all DV victims need to be respected and she is not respecting other DV victims. To add commentary on them trying to find dirt on Nicole, she seems to be pretty transparent and honest and she airs out her own information. What could they really find on her to quote-unquote expose her? Jason and Jessica would also run into each other a few times before he was arrested for 10 years. The chan One time it was described on YouTube that Jessica Kent's boyfriend was desperate to get substances from Jason. So, her boyfriend was desperate to give Jess about anything. Apparently, he was trying to give his watch, and for some reason, Jason was like, I want to catch a glimpse of this chick that you are in this room with, and it's just kind of weird because his boyfriend was ready to give up anything for the drugs. So, Jason goes into the room, and Jessica apparently is not too happy that he was in the room and she got a little feisty according to their accounts and told him to get out because she did not want him in the room. Next time we met, I was at a hotel chilling next door and her boyfriend at the time came in there and was trying to get some dope from me. <clears throat> and he was kind of messed up at the time and stuff and he tried to give me a watch and all this stuff and he's like, I got this girl in the room, I'm trying to go hang out, kick it with her, this, this and that, give me something. 
So I ended up, I'm like, well, let me see this chick. So I walk over to the room and it's her in the room. And uh, she's acting all, again, mouthy. <laughs> I don't know where you're getting this from. <laughs> yeah. She's you know, acting all mouthy and stuff and telling me to get out the room and quit coming around and this, this and that. And so I just left. And like the next day I went to prison on my high speed chase. I, we had seen <clears> each other a couple of times before that though. Like the very next day after that encounter, Jason Forrester was arrested on a high speed chase and he would do 10 years in federal prison. Officers say Jason Forrester raced through the streets of Van Buren last Thursday. I was going down uh, Rasso toward 28. The district attorney's office says Forrester traded drugs for a weapon with an undercover narcotics officer. Police attempted to pull the suspect over and say that's when he sped off. Officers chased Forrester onto Interstate 540, headed towards Fort Smith. Uh, Police say the suspect is a code one. That means he has a gun. Yeah, Rogers. Rogers. Van Buren Police canceled the pursuit when the suspect gets off 540 in Fort Smith. Fort Smith officers take over. It's during rush hour traffic, so and there's a lot of people on the roads, and that creates a danger also. Police arrest Forrester at the Hard Scrabble Country Club. Beep, 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 right? Portsmouth police passed the suspect over to Arkansas State Police. Arkansas State Police transported the suspect back here to Crawford County. The district attorney's office says the U.S. Marshal Service picked him up. In Van Buren, Mallory Cope, 5 News. The prosecutor's office says Foster faces a slew of charges. Jessica's baby daddy and Jessica would be arrested shortly after Jason and Jessica, Jason and the boyfriend would meet again in jail and she would spot him in the hallway in jail and this would lead to her starting a relationship where they become pen pals. She would write him and apologize to him for her crappy attitudes towards him and for whatever reason she wanted to establish this relationship with him in prison. Jason Forster supposedly is known as like the dude who knows how to read people's paperwork and give and he gives people advice about their situation that they have going on with their incarceration. Their friend um, that is, he could be a lawyer, he's so talented, but he was also an inmate. And he said, just wait, dude, just be patient. People sign plea agreements that they don't agree with or that they don't want just to get out of county jail to go to prison. Don't be that person. I'm like, bro, who are you telling? Like, I'm not that person. I'm patient. Yeah. And yeah. I, I waited for six months. And one evening, I think it was about four o'clock, uh, my public defender pulled me out and we went into this little room by the mail pods and he hands me these papers and he said, you are signing this today. And I pick it up and I look at it and it says five years. And I thought, oh my God, five years, I have to sign this. So before I signed it, I ran out to the hallway and I told my friend Forrester, I'm like, yo, get out of the shower. And everyone's yelling for him. They're like, yo, New York is at the door, which is my nickname in that jail. New York's at the right. door. My friend comes out like half naked out of the shower, runs down the stairs. He's thinking something's wrong with the baby, <laughs> you know? It's not even his baby, but he thinks something's wrong. So he's like almost breaks his face because he's so scared. He's so worried. And I'm like, hey, like I just watched this half naked, tatted up dude almost break his face on the stairs. So I'm laughing at him because it just looked hilarious. And he's like, what? What's happening? Is the baby okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, what's up? Should I sign for five years? And he's like, I almost hurt myself on the stair, whatever. Yes, yeah, sign for five years. And I was like, okay, cool. He's like, sign that shit right now. So I walked over to my lawyer who witnessed all of this mania. And I'm like, okay, I'll sign. He's like, did you just take Jason Forrester's word over mine? Because he's exactly he's like, I'm a, many I'm a times. lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I trust him more than I trust you. I'll sign it. So Jason Forrester gets this letter from Jessica Kent and he's very impressed with Jessica Kent. She, he's reading the paperwork. It's stating that she is claiming possibly while under the influence that everything was hers and she was basically just trying to catch the charge and not let her baby daddy fall down for 
the charge. I saw you in the doorway. Just, he's always just so happy. Cheese grin smiling. I'm like, what the fuck is he smiling about in jail? Like, why are you so happy? But that's just always how you how you are. Yeah. So I saw you and you were a familiar face. So my awkward two day sober ass was like, <laughs> hi. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, <clears throat> we hate each other. So I immediately was like, I wish I could take that one back. You know, and I, I'm at the door of the jail of the, my pod. It was CD pod. And I'm like, let me in. <laughs> Please let me in. <laughs> He's staring at me. I was so awkward. <clears throat> so then I got back there and I'm like, I should write him and apologize, you know, because you did look out and you did help me out. And, you know, my bad. <laughs> my bad, uh, homie. And we just became friends ever since. Yeah, I was in the pod with her boyfriend at the time. He, was, he wasn't a good dude as far as I baby was concerned. Daddy. Her baby daddy, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. Bum ass dude. But anyhow. I was in the pod with her, with her baby daddy, and he had his paperwork, and I was going through his paperwork looking at it, because I've been through the feds a couple times. I know what to look for and stuff, and I seen her name in there, and she was trying to take all the charges for him, like telling him that <laughs> if you, it was my dope, my gun, whatever, don't give him no charges, it was all me, but they wanted him and her both, I guess, but once I seen that, I seen she was a stand-up girl, and I, I wrote her back, you know, I wrote her and just started kicking it, you know, and it's, every time I seen her, I'd be smiling and happy. I was like that with everybody in there, just to let them know is don't be depressed in here. I know it sucks, it's a bad situation, but don't put your head down, man. Keep your head up. Don't let these people see you sweat. This gives Jason Forrester the assumption that Jessica Kent was a very loyal chick, and he wanted to get to know her. Jessica and Jason would allegedly write to each other while he was serving 10 years and her one. While writing him, she would tell him everything from her struggles and goals in prison and what she was planning to do when she got out to then speaking on the outside with him about her own personal life. She would tell him things like she was getting implants, and she even complained to him about the fight she had with Reese. It's been 10 years. I remember thinking like, if I'm gonna write him, I'm gonna write him forever. <laughs> like, I'm she gonna did. die writing this person. She did. I thought it would be a lifetime. He's this long person. I would write him and tell him, I'm gonna get my daughter, I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be successful, I'm not going back to prison, I'm gonna do parole, and I would tell him all the things that I did. Even, I think I told you that I was gonna get big boobs one time. I think so. I got a lot of <laughs> stuff saved. I, I got a lot of stuff saved and emails saved about, you know, I was very supportive of her too and everything she said she wanted to do. Okay. I told her she can do it, you know, and she can. You can't. Everybody can. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. If you take your mind and put it to what you want, you can do it. If you no. Was I annoying you and crying on the phone? Yes, you were. <laughs> but that's what you're supposed to do. No, they really broke up. They had some issues. Yeah. They had some issues they had to work through, you know, and I need a co signer. Yeah. No, everybody has problems in a relationship, man. If you don't, you no one has a perfect relationship. There's no perfect relationship. And now, it is alleged that Jessica Kent was emotionally cheating on her ex with Jason while she was with her fiance Reese, and she was emotionally cheating for many years because messages were exposed showing that she was speaking to him in a very sensual way. There is metadata on the letters that were exposed that do look highly probable that they are actual letters from Jason and Jessica while Jason was incarcerated. These messages were eventually given to Reese. Me and Reese hung out for a whole year. When Jess and me were talking, it was me and Reese talking, hanging out. He ate at my house. He slept in my house. We went out all the time. We, we were doing, you know, things. <laughs> um, he met all my friends. He knows everybody. So I know how he is. I know how he gets. After Jason was released, he would start being around Jessica and her fiance at the time, Reese. Jessica and Jason fell out and he ended up being a little more closer to Reese. So Jason is described as being a very loyal person, but he is very revengeful when he is mad. So at the point when he had fell out with Jessica and he ended up being closer with Reese, he shared the emails with Reese when he was basically beefing with Jessica. Saying that allegedly sent these emails to Reese because I know Reese said that this has happened, but was that right before he relapsed or was that very like, did it all kind of happen like boom, boom, boom? He was in his relapse when Jessica and Jason got into it over 
Jay something with Jason's girlfriend. I'm not going to like lie and act like I know what happened because I don't remember exactly what happened, but they had a falling out something over Jason's girlfriend and they were mortal enemies. I mean, enemy. This follow is verified by Jessica Kent's own words. It's in relapsed. Um, I don't even know. January, February, March. I want to say like April. I don't know, March or April of 2022. And we really didn't talk that much uh, after that because obviously I have to protect myself and my family and I just can't have that kind of stuff around me. If you do the research, you will find that a lot of the things that people say actually line up one way or another because Jessica Kent ends up verifying it through her own words or by showing the same text messages that others have shown, she really is just verifying that a lot of the information that is being shared by others is actually accurate. Jessica Kent ends up being friends with Jason again. She seems to, in my opinion, really need him because she's dealing with a lot with her ex and she needs help with getting her house together. So Jason steps in and helps her out. He helps her build her studio and he helps with things like getting furniture from her ex and getting revenge on her ex for harassing her with wellness checks, which by the way, she tries to blame that on her subscribers, but it appears that her ex was the one that was repeatedly calling in wellness checks and making reports to DCF. And now I'm trying to tell him everything that's been going on, but even when we were in the hotel, I was getting wellness checks at my door from the hotel saying, your dad called. I'm like, my dad doesn't know what hotel I'm in. I didn't tell my dad what was going on because I don't want my family to worry. Now, that was back in October. So I'm at the hotel getting wellness checks done by the, by the staff at the hotel. Then I move into the house. I'm getting wellness checks done by cops in my face at 2 a.m. Or the cops yeah, DCFS is at my door. So I have been investigated by DCFS for four months straight. They just closed the second case uh, just the other day. So for four months, DCFS has investigated me on two separate cases, same allegations, both unfounded. Um, and it's just exhausting. So... It gets to the point where, you know, I've been here a couple of times that they came, and it gets to the point where you're just so fucking aggravated with about I'll, I'll yell at the cops now. Get the fuck out of here, you know? And, and Compare notes, yeah. dude. Like Yeah, it, if they don't, first shift don't tell second shift, second shift don't tell third shift, whatever the fuck. They just, all hours of the night, they're showing up over here, you know? I'll be here doing work and fixing something or doing something, and next thing you know, the cops are at the door. You know what I mean? To get Jessica. And I'm like, she's sleeping. Get the fuck out of here. You know, like, oh, no, we can't. The kids are here. I'm like, you ain't getting in. You know, you got to come down and settle me down mm -hmm. to tell them. And, and I'm not fucked up to yell at a cop, you know, because they got no rights. They, they have to follow the law like we have to follow the law. Yeah. And what he was doing is basically using them to harass him. And, I and that is why Jason stepped in and helped her get revenge by basically setting up a situation where someone would go and check on Reese in the middle of the night and irritate him. While Jason was helping Jessica with her studio and helping her deal with her ex, he was sadly battling with staying clean and staying in line with his probation. It appears that even though Jason has spent one decade in jail, he has not left the lifestyle behind and he has been institutionalized when you really look at it. However, before he was arrested, several YouTubers had stated the recent downfall of Jason was coming. Because Jason actually had also been in communication with channels and was giving information. He was telling these creators that he had busted out of rehab after spending two days in, and he also stated that Jessica punched him in the face because he had busted out of rehab and did not fully commit to the full amount of time that he was supposed to while he was in rehab. Man, Jason, who has been selling and using drugs, I talked to Jason on the phone for an hour. He admitted to relapsing on methamphetamine. He told me that you punched him in the face because he left rehab, okay? He told me that you guys were together and that y'all were in love, but he couldn't talk about it on YouTube because you don't want people to know on YouTube. All this is in our one hour long conversation. That's why Jason will only post one snippet of it because in the whole conversation, I asked him all these questions and we were just laughing and giggling and having the best time and he admitted it all to me. <clears throat> Jessica says, well, if you were high, you wouldn't be around me. 
and he just left rehab two weeks ago and she punched him in the eye when he left rehab because he only stayed for two days. I'd like to point out that lie, just that simple lie. And if you lie, no one sober goes to rehab. Who is sober and goes to rehab? If you're not drunk or high on something, you don't go to rehab. And in the video, she says Jason entered her life in December of 2022. So he's been back in her life since December 2022. And two weeks ago, he went to rehab. Yet she says, if you were high, you wouldn't be around me. So which is it? So that that little lie, I just want to point that out because if you lie about that, you'll lie about anything. Jessica Ken, after one of the creators, Mindy exposed on an interview, would run to her TikTok and claim that his insurance would not cover rehab. But like I said, she states things that are true, but she mixes it with lies. And that is and that is why she says he did not complete the rehab requirements. She was making it appear that he did not bust out of rehab, but rather it was his insurance who was at fault. Well, fast forward to now. She also says that Jason's only been sober for two weeks, but his start date was like April something. His end date was 5-5. The only reason he left rehab is because his insurance kicked him out, so now he does intense outpatient. We now know that allegedly Jason's cousin had sadly passed and that he did indeed bust out of rehab. His insurance would then not cover the second attempt to rehab because he was sober at the time of trying to get into rehab, allegedly, according to Jessica Kemp. So, as I said before, Jessica's own words end up confirming the actual truths of what she says. You just really got to pay attention because there are truths mixed in with lies. They tell him that he has to go to a 28-day treatment facility. He gets there and it's not great. It's not great. Unfortunately, during that time where he was supposed to be at that uh, treatment center for 28 days, his nephew unalived himself. And the night that we were all together to um, have like a memorial type of get together for him, uh, Jason decided to leave treatment. He was just so frustrated and hurt and upset and it was a mess. Well, that was on a Friday. Monday morning, Jason goes back to treatment and now his insurance is saying, yeah, you came in clean with not a dirty UA. We're not gonna pay for inpatient treatment. So they sent him to an intense outpatient treatment pending court. So Jason is spiraling out of control. And unfortunately, Jessica's children are all being subjected to this. This situation is messy. This is Jessica Kent's alleged boyfriend. He has it on his Facebook. You know, not really a good situation to have around children. And look, I know not everybody's not perfect. And people love sometimes people that are not good for you. But as Jessica Kent says, he is a walking red flag. Wrong, very negative opinions of Jason. He's a whole fucking red flag. He is a walking, talking red flag. And he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of issues, you know, he's, he's flawed. He's genuinely a good person and I love that man and I will forever have his back. I will forever be his ride or die. And, you know. So, you know, low key, she knows it's not a good thing that she has him around her kids. Cause who wants a walking red flag around your kids? It's, it's just a situation that typically doesn't always have good scenarios in it. And I found it really interesting to see that her subscribers too are calling her out now on this relationship. Because it's not a good relationship. Instead of listening to valid concerns with her latest video on Jason Forrester being arrested in front of her house, she turns off the comments. And she says she's not going to allow people to talk crap about her and her children for her mental health sake. 
that it's not people talking crap on her children. It is literally people telling her to reflect on her actions because some of the decisions that she is making could have direct impact on her children. Jason, who is violating his parole, decides it would be a good idea to go on the run after the judge decides that he needs to go back to jail. And of course, as I said, he gets caught at Jessica Kent's house, where supposedly he is not at 98% of the time. But what a coincidence he gets busted there. You know, he's only there 2% of the time, but he, he just gets busted there. I want to fast forward back to the past and give some more background information on Jason, because he has an issue with running from the feds. I think it's important for people to understand why this is incredibly dangerous that he decides to go on the run this last time, despite him having a horrible experience and having his door kicked in with his own kid inside. Jason Forrester has had this happen in the past. He has spoken about having his door kicked in. He speaks about being raided and this traumatic situation where his daughter is in the house. She's supposed to be staying in the room, you know, so that she can stay safe. But the little girl decides to run out of the room and she's a grown woman now and she still speaks about the experience. I guess being traumatic for her, she can still remember it. It's just a totally tragic situation, and so she runs out of the room, and the police point a gun at her. They kicked the door in. They they messed up my house, you know. And um, when they when I let them in the house, they were I was finally let them in the house, and she was supposed to be in the bedroom, and she came running through the doorway with chasing her little pit bull puppy, Mm. and the officer like went to swing the gun toward her, so I just tackled them. Because I didn't, oh my God. I didn't want her. I'm like, that's my kid. That's my kid. And just like, settle down, settle down. Everybody, settle down. And you know, because, because I, I couldn't live with myself. If anything happened with her mm-hmm. like that, you know. And then, like I said, we were, we were in court, and she was scared of me, and it was just so heartbreaking for me for that, you know. I mean, I couldn't imagine if it was me, and my baby was there, and they're trying to kick down the door, um, and then the officer goes to put his gun on my daughter that's running down the hallway, like. I would lose it. I would lose yeah. it. And just to, just to, to be clear, there was no drugs in the house. There was nothing. There was a gun, a 22 caliber rifle. Where I'm in Arkansas, a 22 caliber rifle in a locked gun case. Yeah. That was my that the girls would could have. So they didn't find nothing in my house. They were going off hearsay what other people said. Again. Again. So this has happened to you multiple times. Yeah. Where other people said, "Oh, he's selling dope." Um, they kick in his door, they don't find yeah. anything, but still they took your daughter. Yeah, they had, they had arrested a girl for stealing a purse at the... She stole a purse at the health club. And she to get out of trouble, she was like, I know a drug dealer, I know this, this, and that. He does this, this, and that. And so they believed her and came and came. My daughter recently visited, and we sat on the couch, and I was talking to her, and I didn't think she remembered it. She remembered a lot of it. She, yeah. like, she remembered the people, she remembered... and I. We were talking about it and it kind of hurt me that she remembered it still, you know. She's like, the people were nice, Dad, you know, I remember this, this and that, and the mom was kind of bossy. So, you can see why she remembers it as an adult. Jason also said that he is listed as a violent offender because the law sees him as a potential threat because of his history. So I think it is incredibly irresponsible for Jessica Kent to allow Jason to be around her. I'm I'm considered a violent felon because I've been arrested multiple times with firearms. I've done shootings, I've fought police, I've I've always done dumb shit. So I'm considered a violent felon. Why would you bring a gun to me, of all people? Despite her completely knowing that he is on the run. She states it in her video that she knew he was on the run. I need a judge to sign off on a search warrant to come in my house and search my house for him. And yes, I tried to get him to turn himself in and just get it over with because we don't want anyone else's door getting kicked in. Like that is a really difficult thing. And she can say all day that he was away from her 98% of the time, but Even allowing him to be around 2% of the time around the place that your kids reside at, that is so incredibly irresponsible and dumb to do because as she even stated in the video, even if he was not there, they were getting ready to kick her door in next. 
because there should have been 12. They had no intention of arresting him that day. They had every intention in the world to arrest him the next day by kicking in my door. He doesn't even live with me, he pops in and out. I know that some of you are probably judging because Jason was on my property when he got arrested. Any one of his friends could have had their door kicked in. Any one of us. She can sit there all day long and blame that there is a lot of overuse of police force. And yeah, there is. But at the end of the day, Jason is listed as a violent offender and he does not comply with turning himself in. And I just don't know how anyone can justify that that is an okay risk to take when you have children around. She claims her children did not see the arrest and they were not around when he was arrested. And I really hope that is the case. But at the end of the day, her children have been through so much and they been around people and then they watch them go and I think Jessica Kent needs to reflect on this situation with Jason because frankly it is not good it's just not good and I don't know how anyone could justify and say that this is a good situation and I've, I have even seen her supporters call her out on this so seeing that she has turned the comments off on her latest video, I don't think she is at the place where she is willing to reflect and think about the ramifications of her own choices. I don't even know, frankly, why she has that video up. As I said, I guess she thinks it's going to get her views by displaying this, like, dramatic situation that involves her children. She doesn't want to hear what people have to say about it, but she wants you to click on that video and watch what has been going on with her. Also to add in how irresponsible she is to have Jason around her and her kids, Jessica has recently spoken about her suspended sentence and how she is indeed going to be thrown under the prison if she is caught violating her terms. I knew it, see? Uh, I'm glad I remembered that. <laughs> Oh my god. Exposure time. She could face up to 40 years in prison for very strict terms. And the terms are very strict. She states that she's not on probation for that suspended sentence. Also, 40 years is probably not as probable as she tries to claim. It is probably all dependent on what she has violated on. She is supposed to be walking a very straight line outside of her prison sentence because she could be thrown right back in if she is caught violating. And they can sentence her from anywhere up to 40 years. She doesn't know how much the time is, so it's not very smart to play around with the chances. She is not supposed to be around people that do not have the best reputation, but look who she surrounds herself with. Jason was arrested by the feds at her house. Now, we are not going to go into all the obvious ways she is violating her terms. But what I will say is, she is showing how she has violated these terms right on YouTube. That is not a smart thing to do. When she shows a recording of the feds that were raiding Jason's house, speak about his and Jessica Kent's channel. Sorry, we're going to roll. I'm ready to be on the podcast. That's why I want to the feds do their research very well and they will go find all the information that you have posted online this is paperwork that she proudly shows to fact check someone but if i was her I wouldn't be parading that paper around. Instead, she should be taking a close look at that paper and check to see if she's following her terms exactly how it says for the sake of her children. The relationship with Jason is a very valid concern that many have, including Reese's family and Reese. So her relationship with Jason and the things that have unfolded since she has brought Jason in her life has put her under the microscope with CPS. She blames this on her subscribers harassing her. But as Mindy has said, someone called and they had stated that they had concerns with the person she was dating, Jason Forrester. Here is a text from my first day there. So 
So I woke up to, I came to her house about 8.30 in the morning and I woke up about 12.30 to her and her boyfriend frantically telling me CPS was at their house because someone had called and told CPS that she was dating a drug dealer and that she was doing drugs. Later that day, she went to Walmart and bought cleansing drinks and drank two of them to cleanse her urine because she had to go take a drug test for CPS or what have you. Um, <clears throat> and she, this was on a Friday, so she got caught cleaning her urine with CPS. They caught her um, tampering with her urine. So then she had to go back and take another one, which she diluted with water. They caught her diluting it with water. So then they called her back for a third one, but I was gone by the time the third one happened. So I also wanted to point out something interesting that the Reddit community had spotted. Jessica Kent had posted a video where she was supposed to be raw and honest about the things that she has going on in her life. And she was supposed to be addressing a lot of the information that Mindy was putting out. I saw that she had unlisted the video and I downloaded it because I was very curious what part of the video she was concerned about and what she did not want her subscribers to see. So she recently re-enlisted the video after she has been trying to combat a lot of the controversies that have been surrounding her. But when she re-enlisted the video, she edited out two minutes of the video. Well, I downloaded the video and I do have the two minutes she cut out. And I now understand why she doesn't want her audience to see it. It is because she speaks about her CPS situation. And in it, it pretty much lines up to Mindy's accounts. As I said, she says a lot of truth, but she mixes it in with lies. So let's compare the clips. It was called on me and I took several drug tests for them. Allegations were drug use. When the caseworker first came, if she walked into a trap house, yeah. being called and what the fuck is going on in my house? Am I running a trap house? Like, what? Um, CPS was called on me and I took several drug tests for them. To the best of my knowledge, the way that it works in Illinois is they have to test you several times at random to make sure that you're not using if the allegations were drug use. But when the caseworker first came here, she said, if you pass a test tomorrow, because I had to go to like a place to do it, if you pass a test tomorrow, we can close the case. And I'm like, well, that doesn't sound right actually because that's really quick, but I'm like, okay. I went and I took the test and a few days later, I was asked to go in and take another test. And because of my schedule, because I'm a single mom, because I work, because the kids, I only have X amount of time during the day um, to be able to do what I have to do without kids. Well, it was becoming very stressful because I have just been through an abusive relationship. He would monopolize my time, call the cops on me at 2 a.m., keep me exhausted. So I was really frustrated and I'm like, I just did that for you guys. Like, why do I have to take another one? She goes, oh, well, there was something wrong with the test. I'm like, no, I've been taking a test my whole life. That makes no fucking sense. That's not true took another test. She said, that came up invalid too. We have to get you to take a third test. I said, no, it didn't. Tell me the truth. What is going on? And it was just a really ridiculous thing. So I eventually had my lawyer call the supervisor and they said, they just have to keep doing that because the foster care system and CPS, like they're horrible sometimes. And there's like 400,000 missing kids in the foster care system. They've been in trouble for letting things slide and they just have to make sure that everything is good. When the caseworker first came, if she walked into a trap house, it is very clear that CPS was called because the person was concerned with Jessica Kent's boyfriend, Jason Forrester, being around the kids. Tracy Noel has shared the 911 call on her channel, and it sounds like Reese, but Jessica Kent says it was Reese's dad, which in my opinion makes it worse because it's not the bitter baby daddy that is just mad that a new man is around her children but it's actually a grandparent. A grandparent who is probably concerned for his grandchildren. This call leads to Jessica having mishaps with her urine test and needing to take it multiple times for CPS. Now, Jason Forrester cannot take blame for all of Jessica Kent's actions. Jessica Kent has to take responsibility for her own actions. And she is solely responsible for making sure that those kids are in a safe environment. So 
it is very concerning with a lot of the information that has been exposed online and I think the relationship is a valid concern that people have. It did lead to a CPS investigation and the CPS investigation was marked unfounded, according to Jessica Kent. It appears even despite him indirectly putting her children's life at risk that she is going to continue to support Jason no matter what. Because as she says, she is his ride or die. And that statement to me is so toxic and it's really juvenile in today's day and age. The ride or die ideology is completely toxic. It leaves no room for putting boundaries or putting oneself first. It is a statement that allows people to be manipulated and it ensures that the person stays by the manipulator side because as the saying says, You are supposed to be a ride or die. And when you think about it, it makes sense why she calls her subscribers the ride or die. Because she probably expects the same, even if she is manipulating them and not telling them the whole truth of the situation. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye for now.